Frederick was born in 454 AD in the Roman province of Pannonia, the son of an Ostrogothic noble called Theodomir. He was taken to Constantinople as a hostage at the age of six or seven, and held there to guarantee his father's friendliness towards Roman policy, including the payment of a regular tribute. However, one of the perks of this for Theodoric was that he received a Roman education and familiarity with the Roman system and customs. He returned to the Ostrogoths in 470 AD, and upon doing so began to rule over an area of Ostrogothic control, and his father Theodomir later became king. Theodomir led a campaign against the Sarmatians, who had been expanding into Moesia in modern Serbia. This expansion was done at the expense of the Eastern Roman Empire and of Gothic influence. So Theodoric led 6,000 warriors and defeated the Sarmatians, but he decided to keep the lands for himself. Theodoric continued to expand his influence and his territory throughout the 470s, sometimes in the name of Rome, and sometimes nakedly for his own gain. When another Theodoric, who I'll call Strabo, who was king of the Thracian Goths, rebelled against Emperor Zeno, Theodoric mustered his forces against him. Zeno had promised Theodoric a large Roman reinforcement, However, upon arriving at the battle site, the Theodoric realised that there was no Roman reinforcement, and, the and Zeno's tactic had probably been to play the two Theodorics against each other, an attempt to dent the growing influence of Theodoric and damaging the rebellion efforts of Strabo. However, unfortunately for Zeno, this effort backfired somewhat, and the two Theodorics put a joint proposal to Zeno to expand Gothic settlement further south into Moesia. The Ostrogoths were in famine, and so they needed more fertile lands to feed their people. Upon the breakdown of these negotiations, Theodoric the Great then moved westwards across the Balkans, enraged at Zeno's treachery, and plundered as he went. This induced Zeno to send emissaries to make a settlement. However, as negotiations were being made, Zeno sent troops on, the on an unsuspecting Gothic detachment under Theodomir, capturing many supplies as much as 2,000 wagons and around 5,000 Gothic people. Meanwhile, Zeno had induced the Bulgars to attack Strabo in Thrace. The Bulgars were defeated, however Strabo's force was weakened and attack on Constantinople was no longer feasible. On his way back to his encampment, Strabo was killed trying to break an unruly, unruly horse and ceased to be a threat. Theodoric settled his people in Epirus in 479 and launched a raid into Greece into 482, sacking the large city of Larissa. Zeno was compelled to make overtures to Theodoric yet again, making him Magister Militon and Consul Designate in the following year, allowing him to command the provinces of Dacia Repensis and Moesia Inferior on the Danube. Theodoric was not happy with this, however, and continued to ravage Thrace and Greece, even threatening Constantinople. Zeno once again sought the help of the Bulgars, who were once again defeated. In an attempt to exert yet more pressure on the Eastern Roman Empire, Theodoric began blockading Constantinople in 487 AD, occupying parts of the suburbs and even cutting off the city's water supply. At this point, Theodoric was likely bribed by Zeno to cease his assault on the Eastern Roman Empire and instead to press into Italy and attack Odoacer. Although Odoacer was nominally a client of Zeno, he was not respecting the rights of Roman citizens in Italy and was yet another force harassing the Eastern Roman Empire. Theodoric was convinced that the Italian campaign would be easier and more profitable. So he was joined by his cousin Frederick, who was king of the Rugi, and set off on his way to Italy. However, on his way through northern Serbia, he was opposed by the Gepids, who he swiftly defeated. Upon arriving in Italy in 489 AD, Theodoric faced Odoacer at the Battle of Isonzo River, with Theodoric winning convincingly despite his fall of smaller force, leading them on the front lines. Odoacer then fled back to Viona, where he was bested again by Theodoric three days later. Odoacer then fell back to Ravenna and fortified his capital over the winter, also receiving reinforcements from southern Italy. Odoacer then faced Theodoric at, at Fezena, near Bologna, and, and defeated him. Odoacer then eagerly pressed Theodoric, however he was bested at the Battle of Ada River. Theodoric and Odoacer vied for control of northern Italy for years until in 493 AD Theodoric took control of Ravenna and induced Odoacer to sign a treaty agreeing to share Italy. In order to celebrate this newfound concord, a feast was arranged, and after making a toast, Theodoric stabbed Odoacer, 
killing him and most of his followers and leaving himself as master of Italy. Theodoric, not wishing to spread his people too thin, settled them in northern Italy and married the sister of Clovis, king of the Franks, who ruled over much of Gaul at the time, and married his own sister to Tharismund, who was king of the Vandals and Alans, and who were in control of North Africa. After consolidating peace with his most powerful neighbours, Theodoric led a campaign against his old enemies, the Gepids, and in doing so added P Pannonia to his realm in 504 AD. When the Visigothic king, Alaric II, died at the hands of Clovis after the Franks had invaded Visigothic Gaul in 507, Theodoric became regent for his grandson, Amalaric, thus creating a Gothic superstate which stretched from Spain to Pannonia. Theodoric managed to keep the Franks out of Spain and Transalpine Gaul, eventually concluding a peace after the death of Clovis. Despite still technically being a viceroy for the Roman Empire, Theodoric clearly viewed himself as an equal to him and dealt with the Eastern Roman Empire on equal terms. Theodoric enjoyed imperial regalia and wore purple robes. Theodoric allowed Roman citizens to continue their customs and maintain their rights and laws, with the Goths maintaining their own. Theodoric was not just a successful military leader, but also undertook many building projects. He restored the aqueducts in Ravenna, which had previously been built by Trajan. He also undertook bath building and construction of walls and churches across the cities of northern Italy, such as Pavia, Milan, Parma, and also in Rome. Theodoric built many churches, particularly those of the Arianist, as he was an adherent to that. Sadly, most of these were destroyed in the Middle Ages by later Christians. But he also built a basilica of Hercules, with a colossus of the hero standing next to it showing that he also respected some of the native pagans remaining in Italy. He also showed respect for the Jews, as in Ravenna, he demanded that a synagogue be rebuilt after it was destroyed in a riot. Goths have a historical reputation for rampant destruction, but we can see from this that it is just not accurate. Upon Theodoric's death in 526, he was interned in his mausoleum, which still survives to this day and is one of the most impressive buildings in Ravenna although his bones were removed and the building was converted into a church when Belisarius captured Ravenna in 540.